Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Mission Control, a podcast focusing on executive directors and nonprofit leaders and how they strive to make positive impacts in their community. I'm your host, Paul Schmidt, the owner and creative video strategist for Introduce Multimedia. And I would like to welcome our guest today, Tamika Kitchen Spruce from the Michigan Disability Rights Net, uh, Coalition. Yes. Hi, hi, Tamika. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So the first thing that we like to start out with is the mission of your organization, seeing as the name of the the podcast is Mission Control. So what is the mission of the Michigan Disability Rights Coalition? Yeah, so the role of Michigan Disability Rights called the mission is to uh, really to uh, reduce what we advocate for uh, people with disabilities, but particularly, we really uh, like to um, just like reduce the multiple oppression that people with disability and uh, marginalized communities face. And we see a disability uh, not as a deficit, but uh, just a natural, beautiful part of being human. Excellent. And I know that, you know, what's funny about you and I is like we've worked together for a few years now, but we've never met face to face. No, we haven't. <laughs> I know it's that's the 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 power, I guess you could say, or the 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 weirdness of a pandemic is you would end up working with a lot of different people that you never even meet sometimes. I mean, you've met some of my team, but you yeah. haven't met but you haven't met me. So I want to just um, dive into your very, very interesting background. So I want to start at the beginning because, like I said, we haven't really got a chance to sit down face to face and and chat um, uh, like like uh, if if you were in if we were in the same place. So let's go right into how did you, get to where or how did you even start how what was the, what was the first thing that you did that got you on the path to where you are now what was it what, what started it all off yeah so it really started um really like when when i was um a kid when i was actually 12 years old to point back where i had to advocate for myself uh you know i have a physical disability, spinal cord injury. And so um, at the age of 12 years old, um, I advocated for myself to be uh, what we call mainstreamed. So that is being with uh, the uh, same ages, you know, being with your, being in the same classroom with your peers who's not disabled. And so um, I advocated for myself to be mainstreamed uh, all day, you know, all of the um, school day. And so uh, that's kind of like where my first point of advocacy uh, for myself as a disabled person. But when I, the time that I actually got to disability advocacy, which is advocating for others, was um, after my time as Miss Wheelchair Michigan 2006. Uh, that was my first time that I met uh, women, you know, with physical disabilities like myself. And so that was really a trans transformational time for me uh, to see this whole community, uh, like I said, people like myself. So uh, my platform, part of me, Miss Wheelchair, you have to have a platform that, you know, if you win, what would you do? And so I, I my platform was to end abuse towards uh, women with disabilities uh, because women with disabilities, people with disabilities are are at a higher risk of you know domestic violence, sexual abuse, and those type of things. And so uh, that was my platform. And then from there, uh, with alongside the community that I met, uh, we I formed a nonprofit. It's no longer in, in existence, but it was an organization for women with disabilities. Well, so you you actually 
got out and started your own nonprofit right right off the bat. And so going into that community and and being like almost like a face because like you said you won this this prestigious award and brought attention to yourself, how did that make you feel um uh or how did you feel like that empowered you to be able to go the, to the next phase of starting a nonprofit? Yeah. Um, so, and I would say that I did not originally win. It's kind of by, by yeah. default, but. Uh, sorry, I just, I, just, I just think you're a winner. That's all. That's all. I'm sorry. I got caught. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. But I did, you know, represent the state of Michigan at the national competition. And so, you know, I, I, I would say that being around such a strong uh, community of women, uh, there was a whole, you know, group of women and men uh, with physical disabilities um, in Detroit. And so uh, that just really, seeing that really empowered me to like, well, you know, I really love advocating and I'm passionate about this issue. And so let's start a, you know, nonprofit, let's work together to you know, help other women and men, um, you know, start becoming entrepreneurs. And that was really like the feature of the program. And I received funding and had an office and everything. So I was able to uh, give some, um, donate money to a couple uh, business owners who had disabilities. So, but I wouldn't have been able to do any of that without the community uh, that was around at that time. That's, that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. I mean, that's very heartening. Um, and uh, with that, another thing, another aspect um, that I want to touch on, because that's a really good segue into you being a storyteller. Um, and that really speaks to me because that is actually my title. I mean, I, I am a, a visual, a visual storyteller at that. And so what I mean by that is you're, you're able to communicate and draw people together, uh, through, through, uh, like-minded stories. And so that really spoke to you. Talk, talk to me a little bit about your visual storytelling uh, uh, journey as well. Yeah. Um, so uh, the reason why I got into, you know, storytelling, uh, because I like as a kid, I also always wanted to uh, be like in film and theater, and, you know, the arts. I was just naturally drawn to it. Uh, but art also is because I, growing up, I never saw uh, media images that I could, you know, relate to as a, uh, you know, Black young woman with a physical disability. And so, you know, I really wanted to change that and create that type of representation. And so uh, when the uh, film incentives uh, was big in Michigan um, at the time, like this was like in 2010, um, and then some years after, a little bit before. So um, after graduating from college, that's where I got into, particularly with film. I was, I did do, um, as during my young adulthood, did theater and wrote um, a one act play and those type of things. So, you know, I got really got my feet wet, but when the film and symptoms was here, that's where I really uh, went into head, head, um, head first, you know, into the uh, film and storytelling as a production assistant. So from there, I uh, wrote and uh, produced, co-directed a short film, Justify a Homicide, and then I also uh, produced, exactly produced um, a documentary, My Girl Story. So just really want to, um, well, I'm also passionate about, you know, telling stories uh, from uh, marginalized uh, communities in a kind of like thought-provoking, unapologetic way. And what, what was your what was your what what's your favorite part of that process? What what did you like to do? Um, what was the 
yeah, what what spoke to you in in, in developing these? Yeah, and so um, it's really I like the whole like producing aspect. So you know, getting all the pieces together, like the crew and the location, and you know those type of things. Um, and also, I love you know being on set, even though you know, haven't been on set. Uh, for a minute, but, uh, you know, I love the process of, you know, the actors or capturing people, uh, you know, interviews and things like that. Did you do the interviews? Did you like doing that part? Did yeah. You do yeah, I did. Okay. All right. yeah right. and then the director too, uh, for my girl story, that was a documentary. So yeah, we both did that. Okay. All right. And so that's my favorite part. I, as you can tell, I'm, 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 I'm really partial to the interviewing part of, of, of the, the process. So that's, that's yeah. where you get to do these great conversations. And so, um, now you said you had two different types of, of films you created. One was a documentary and one was called justifiable homicide, right? Yeah. Is that what you said? That was a yeah. narrative that was narrative. Yeah. That's a short film. Okay, and wh what was your role in that one? Was it the same thing, producing and directing? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Yeah. What, what, do you like to do? What would what did you like uh, out of those two um, styles? Which one would you lean more into? The narrative, the the narrative thing, or the the more documentary style? Yeah, um, mm, yeah, it's kind of hard because I do like both, you know, mediums. Uh, I like film or, you know, fictional narrative uh, type because of, you know, the story. You get to see them acting and, you know, really uh, actors who they do a great job can, you know, really bring you into that moment uh, that you are um you know wanting from that scene so um you know that's that's what i love about it but then you know nonfiction or you know documentary uh what i like about that is you know is using real people and telling their story mm -hmm. um and so creating that representation and uh highlighting the issues you know that comes from um those individuals you know that interviewing or you know i'm having in the film um is important to me too so it's kind of hard to 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 say yeah yeah i can see that it's funny is like i do more and and, and as you know it's more documentary style um yeah. uh video but i like watching more of the narrative uh, fictional style story. <laughs> it's like, it's one of those, cause I don't get a chance. I, I shouldn't say don't get a chance, but I don't really do many of the, much of the narrative. If it's not just, yeah, that's not, that's not what we do here. Uh, but you know that already, but it isn't, this isn't about talking about my company. This is about talking about you. So you've pivoted, um, with those experiences into working with, the Michigan Disability Rights Coalition. Um, I want. What is your role there? What What is What What are you What do you oversee there? Yeah. So um, at the um, at Michigan Disability Rights Coalition, we call it um, MDRC for short. Yep. Yep. And so, um, so what I do there is I work with uh, nonprofit leaders um, in Michigan, but right now is in the Detroit area on uh, disability inclusion. So how can they, uh, you know, include uh, people with disabilities into their organization um, and uh, particularly from communities of color. And so, you know, they learn various things, you know, like uh, disability awareness, uh, disability pride, uh, history, culture, um, uh, and then, you know, accessibility. So how to make their um, events and conferences and meetings accessible, 
um, how to create a place of belonging for people with disabilities. Um, so, you know, they, they go through this whole process as a cohort style for a year. And, you know, where they learn, like I said, all the information. And then um, I work with them one-on-one uh, -on, -one on uh, how they're going to implement their disability goal. So, yes. And how did you find MDRC? Or how did they find yeah. you? <laughs> yeah. So I, um, I actually got involved at M MDRC. Uh, through their fellowship program that they had in, I think it was 2018. Uh, they had a specific uh, cohort program fellowship for uh, BIPOC disabled people. And so you learn disability leadership, you learn how to uh, facilitation skills and those type of things. And so uh, like I got involved and then the um the program manager at the time you know she saw that my passion that i had um and you know my skills and such so she um had me or asked me to be a contractor and so i contracted for um, about a year or two on uh facilitating webinars on like black disability experiences and then um, a job was opened for me to become a program director of the program that I was, you know, formerly involved with. And so uh, that's how I got a full-time employee. And so what, what um, now I know that when you first started, you've actually kind of progressed uh, into the leadership role that you are in. What are some of the things that, when you got into your leadership role that you really wanted to tackle um, first and foremost? Yeah. Um, and so um, what I really want to tackle is like, how can I, you know, through the cohort experience, really create a place that, um, you know, people are going to enjoy, you know, they're going to learn, and where they're going to, you know, feel like they belong and see the hurt, you know, for so long as disabled people, uh, you know, particularly in communities of color and, you know, same thing could be women and girls. We are so often, you know, ignored in society and um, so many, you know, uh, stereotypes and um, different expectations and, limitations of who you can be and what you can do and you know and you're kind of locked out of certain resources so i just really wanted to uh make sure uh that to create a place where you know people can get the resources and they they can feel seen and heard and build that community you know i know that you've been in this field for a while whether it was with mdrc or before and do you feel like you're making headway um, in a lot of the initiatives that you're developing and, and partnering with? Yeah, I think that it is, you know, helping people, you know, people have, you know, told me that it is, you know, encouragement. So, uh, you know, encouraging me. So, yeah, I think it's, 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 it's making, you know, um, some, you know, weigh some impact and everything. Sometimes it's hard to, you know, measure <laughs> all mm. the time, you know, but uh, I, I, I hope and I believe it is. Well, that's good. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm, you know, just listening to uh, what we've talked about and the presentations that you've done. I mean, it's very solid, but, you know, where do you feel like, there's still room to grow where where do you feel like there's areas in which you just haven't really gotten the foothold that you want um that's a good question um i would say 
I would say that I would like to kind of move towards, uh, you know, to make sure that I, I'm continuing to make that impact. So right now in my role is to, you know, make sure that the nonprofits have a tool, the tools to, you know, uh, create um, a space for people with disabilities where they can belong and uh, they can, you know, uh, be included, fully included in. And so that's in my role right now. But um, like in the future, what I hope to do is, you know, through my role of DRC or, you know, even outside of it, just uh, with like my films and things like that, I just really want to uh, create um, more awareness um, around, you know, what people with disabilities um, experience, you know, to really uh, showcase our stories more. Um, Especially like you know when it comes to media, so because you know I my film is on Tubi and Amazon Prime, and, you know those type of things. But I really want to grow it to the point that I can, uh, you know, in the future work with networks or work with like you know PBS or you know what I'm saying to really be able to, uh, you know, tell our stories and create that representation because um, even though. I think in media that is getting better as far as the uh, representation of people with disabilities, but I don't think it's enough diversity in those stories. And so, you know, I would like to, you know, be able to tell more uh, diverse stories and um, and then maybe get to some policies too, because that's really, I see lackey in uh, awareness around but that's in the future it's a lot that's a lot um so what do you feel is like one of the policies? let's let's narrow it down a little bit what is one one policy that you want to see really change more sooner than later because a lot of this stuff as you know um as a person in your position uh that has lived the life you've lived, a lot of things get kicked down the road. And um, especially when it comes to policy and because we don't have representative, representatives that actually represent uh, some folks. And so you, there, you know, but anyway, you know, here nor there, what is, what is one of the thing, what of one of the legislation or policy that you wanna make, you wanna see be achieved a lot sooner than later? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say, yeah, that's that's a good question to kind of narrow it down. <laughs> but the way that I, you know, envision it is, you know, that particularly when it comes to communities of color, uh, particularly in the black community, um, I feel like um, a lot of times when it comes to, you know, different policies, uh, you know, disability is uh, left out of the equation, meaning in Michigan, African Americans has the highest rate of disabilities. And that is also reflected nationally. But when you talk about, you know, uh, the issues that African American community faces, uh, you know, the disability community of Black disabled people are left out of the conversation when it comes to having, discussing the policies, you know, that exist. So, you know, one of the policies I know is when it comes to, you know, education and sometimes, you know, uh, urban areas uh, don't get uh, enough uh, adequate money for supporting you know, cho uh, children with disabilities, you know, because of it, the urban area or that a lot of uh, uh, black children um, don't receive the diagnoses or don't provide or not, don't receive the um, enough support, you know, needed to um, really flourish and, and things like that. And, um, and then also like black children, um, 
who have disabilities are more likely to be uh, like in prison and get go to the school to prison pipeline and things like that. So when we talk about these issues, you know, when it comes to African American community, you know, there's really no equation of how we're gonna address those with disabilities, even though we are, a lot of us do have disabilities one and four. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why I mean, like, I really would like to uh, work within my community uh, to make sure, you know, uh, uh, the disability conversation is there. If I'm making sense. No, yeah, absolutely. You're making a lot of sense. And I mean, that answers the question very completely. Um, I know that we've got about five minutes left, and I don't want to not ask about this because when I saw that this popped up, I believe on LinkedIn that you were you were involved with this person, I was like, that is really cool. And I'm talking about Kamal Bell. So oh, yeah. Like, talk about how that came about and and just just that whole experience of working with him um, regularly. Yeah. Yeah. So that came up about I was through uh, I uh, applied to be part of this program called Unlock Her Potential. And it's for women of color uh, who wants to be in entertainment, uh, nonprofit, you know, policy sector. And so uh, I applied for W. Camille Bell because mm-hmm. I, you know, became a fan of his through United Shades of, of United Shades of, of America. And that was on CNN and stuff. And I watched it faithfully. And I like his interview style, like the stories that he brought up. He also did an episode on disability. And so uh, I think it would be cool. And so he actually, you know, selected me uh, to be his mentee. And so I got to meet with him uh, once a month for the whole you know, for the whole 2023. And so that was a really great experience. Um, I have a couple, because I'm not doing a lot, but a couple of things in development, you know, that I've been working on um, outside of MDRC. So he was really great uh, Saudi board, you know, how to uh, do those things and how to, you know, get into the industry, so. Oh. Well, that's interesting. Is it anything you can talk about? <laughs> yeah. So there's one, uh, let's see, that I'm in development with is called uh, Divas, uh, Divas in the City. And so that's kind of like a, a fun reality type of show uh, that is, you know, showcasing uh, five African American unapologetic. African American women taking their city by storm. Mm. And so they all have physical disability. So, you know, just working on as much as I can, you know, I have a packed schedule, but, <laughs> you know, I'm working with uh, another person. Um, her name is Dr. Donna Walton. And so she has Divas with Disabilities Project. So she came to me two years ago um, about the idea and, I said, yeah, that'd be cool. So the show is inspired by her organization. Okay. All right. And so you have sponsors and all that lined up and is that, or is that still in the process? Yeah, it's still in the process. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's incredible. That's, that's good stuff. What was the, the, the key thing that you learned the most from your time with, uh, um, uh, Kamal Bell? Yeah. Yeah. So it was really, he just told me to just get the, just get out there and tell people stories. So, you know, do things on YouTube, you know, because I originally wanted Divas to be like on a network and I actually got some interest from a network too. But, you know, we had to kind of revamp some things and kind of go back to the 
to them, but he said the best advice is to just go and put it on YouTube. So that's that's what we're, you know, in the process of doing. You know, have you have a lot of big dreams and like you know, have an interest of a network, but you know, it's nothing wrong with starting small and you know, just get you on know, YouTube. Many shows have been uh went to network that started on YouTube. That's very good advice. And in fact, that would be the same advice I, I would give you. So I can really second that. That's incredible. Now, now we're coming to the close. This is something that I always ask everybody. With your packed schedule and all of the things you have to worry about or put on your, or is on your plate, what do you do to get away from it? What is what are your decompression techniques? You know, so just to just to get away for a second, put it all aside, and just recenter yourself. What what are what are some things that you do? Um, and so I like to, you know, watch movies on, uh, you know, Friday nights and mm-hmm. Saturday nights with my husband. Um, and I like to, you know, on the weekends, I hang out with. You know, my family, family have, have kids too. So, you know, we go to the mall and, uh, you know, go, you know, watch, go to the movies and, mm-hmm. and things like that. So really spending time with, you know, my family um, is kind of like the way uh, that I like to decompress. That's awesome. That's awesome. And that, that closes our show. But before we let you go, what is uh what are some ways that people can get a hold of you if they have more questions yeah. yes so uh they can go to uh my website um at uh www.tamikasitchinspruce.com they can find me on linkedin under the same name facebook and as far as M- uh, the work at mdrc they could go to uh, www.myfdrc.org. Awesome. And I apologize for mispronouncing your name right at the top. I apologize for that. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> thank you for being on my show, even though I mispronounced your name right at the front end. Yeah. <laughs> no, so the black people do. Yeah. So um, must have been a, a brain thing there. So anyway, thank you again for being on the show. Tamika, I really appreciate it. And yes, thank, you. thank you. Oh, no problem. And thank you, everybody, for once again taking some time to listen to our program. Don't, m- don't miss the next episode coming out in a couple weeks. And if there's somebody that you know of and you, you would like to hear about their story, please email us at emissioncontrol at introduce.com. And if, and if this is your first time here, please subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform and give us a review. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time in the Control Center.